How you doing? It's Brett Campbell here, creator and founder of the Authority Academy, and welcome to today's episode on the Online Prosperity Show with yours truly, Prosper, and today myself. Looking forward to getting stuck into this episode. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, and today we've got none other than Brett. Brett, how are you doing, sir? I'm very well, thank you, Prosper. How are you? Great energy there to kick off your show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, sorry about the teething uh, beats, but I know we're going to have absolute value in this. Now, Britt is the founder. He's an author and a well-respected marketer and has actually taught me how to become a highly respected and a highly paid authority in this industry. Hence, we're having this show. And I just thought we'd hear it from the horse's mouth of where it all started and how you too can be, do and have whatever you seek out to achieve. Brett, thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure, mate. Great, so for all I know, when, uh, when we started, your story starts off as um, some carpenter that was just really trying to get by in life. How does that fold off from then on? Maybe you can tell the, the story better than I can. Yeah, I probably can, because I actually lived it, right? Um which there's no, there's, there's no better storytelling than actually going through the story yourself. So, mate, I, I got kicked out of high school, uh, fell into what I call a job, uh, which was an apprenticeship. The only thing that my local town had for me at that time. So I jumped into um, the first opportunity, which was, you know, an apprentice cabinet maker where, you know, the, the goal was to build kitchens and, you know, all of those cabinets and things that you'd find inside a house, right? And uh, I knew from day one, though, and this is a very important note, uh, that resonates with a lot of people. Is I knew though from day one that that wasn't what I was meant to be doing on this planet. Um, however, funnily enough, I stuck at it for five years too long. Um, now, to give you the quick story, you know, it got to a point where I knew I wasn't, I wasn't, dis I didn't want to spend the rest of my life being a cabinet maker, no matter how far I could have gone through the chain. You know, they were grooming me up to own the business, but I realized that I was like, oh, I could own the business and I still wouldn't be happy. So I, jumped on an airplane pretty much and moved from New Zealand where I grew up to Australia to start a brand new life um, and transitioned into a complete different industry, which was the fitness industry. You know, I became a good personal trainer. Uh, I was very good at the gift of the gab as you would, you would place it. You know, I was able to be able to talk and communicate with people and I quickly found myself with a, you know, fully booked clientele. And from there, the transition moved into I was walking outside one day to go and train my clients in the evening. I was going back to the gym and I walked past my flatmate at the time, her computer, and there was an ebook there of a workout program and, and I stopped. I was like, what is that? And she goes, oh, it's, it's, it's a workout program. I just bought it. I'm like, how much did you pay? $37. I was like, whoa, 37 bucks. And that's where my transition of the introduction to the online world, you know, the online digital landscape, as I like to put it. And it just went from there. I knew that at that moment that the, the internet was going to be my vehicle, you know, so I became a student in that again, you know, I took on the apprentice role. I took on the apprentice mindset, which I'd learned so heavily actually being an apprentice. You know, I, I think in this day and age, too many people are running before they're walking and they don't do their apprenticeship, you know, whether you're wanting to, um, you know, build sales funnels, whether you're wanting to be a coach or whether you're wanting to teach someone something, you know, I think everyone needs to go through their apprenticeship in it to be able to get the runs on the board to then be able to present and, and share with other people. So that's where I guess it's transitioned into now, you know, I've been doing it so heavily in our own business for years, you know, generating hundreds of thousands of leads, millions of fans and over 45,000 customers around the world. Now my passion is to be able to teach other entrepreneurs, you know, like yourself to how do you actually go out there and, and, and become an authority in your industry? Well, thank you so much, Brett, for that. Yes. And I'm a proud student of your, um, you know, authority Academy, uh, going, having gone through the whole, uh, roadmap. Can you just also tell us, you did mention that people have to be an apprentice. What is it that you actually, um, would encourage people to learn first and then how, how do they step up and, and, and um, become what becomes an authority in there? Mm. Well, I think the first thing is, is getting your hands dirty, you know, and not literally figuratively. In my case, it was, you know, I was sword, I was brooming up sawdust and timber scraps and throwing them in the bin, right, when I was an actual apprentice. Um, but for me in the, you know, I guess if I look and reflect on my apprenticeship as a, 
online marketer or as a business person or as an authority or as a speaker, as a coach, whatever title you want to put on it, you know, you've got to go through and actually test and trial and, and test it on your own stuff as well. You know, test it on yourself. Um, not try and go out there and, and generate income off other people whilst you're trying to test it. Now there's a level of that. There's a level of crossover where you may still be testing and trying things. So, you know, I put my hand up, I still test and try things as well. And sometimes I do do that with certain clients, right? I'm not going to take a beginner and go, here you go, let's try this. I've never tried it before, but there is an element of that. So that's important to note. But where I'm really saying is, is just make sure people, you know, as you're going through your apprenticeship, you're staying in your lane. Do you know what I mean? Because it's so easy now in this day and age to swim outside your lane because there's a new webinar tactic. There's a, now I can become a consultant in this. I can do this. I can do that. You know, I put a post up on Facebook like half an hour ago saying, you know, the irony where someone was going live teaching you how to build a massive following and they had like five people on their video. (laughs) <laughs> you know, like now I'm not here to try and, you know, cast a spell upon anyone and say, don't follow your dreams if that's what you really want to do. But before you go out there and try and teach people to do that, you know, just make sure that you've got the runs on the board. It's simple. You're not going to go to a broke accountant. You know, you're not going to go and get health and fitness advice from an extremely overweight person. You know, you, you, you're going to, you're going to go and seek advice from people who are doing it. And if you are someone who wants to become that person, then you need to do your own due diligence to make sure that you can stand the test of time. You can, and this is, this is how I, I preface it. If you're not comfortable enough to stand in a room with the top 10 people, you know, judged by who though, but the top 10 people in the world, in your industry, then you need to go back to figure out what is it that's actually stopping you. Maybe it's just the confidence. Maybe it's because you don't have the runs on the board, you know? And again, if you're listening or watching and you're thinking, Oh, I have to be the top 10 before I can teach this. No, that's not, that's not what I'm saying here. It's, it's a, it's just a figure. It's a mark to show your level of confidence within that. And there's always going to be someone though, that you can help on the step down, right? I, I totally get that. Um, but I think the key to, to a true apprenticeship is, you know, you got to do your time. You got to, you got to go through the hard yards and figure some of this stuff out. Great. So Brett, thank you. Now we might have somebody who's watching right now and they might be thinking, Oh, I think I like this Brett guy. He's got this insight around him. What sort of resources have you got? Oh, can you recommend that somebody can get a hold of that? Um, you have of your own that people can utilize to, you know, excel in life. Yeah, look, no, we've got a number of different options. I guess the best thing is you could go to brettcampbell.net. So B-R-E-T-T dot oh, Brett Campbell. You'd think I'd know my own URL. Oh. Brettcampbell.net. <laughs> and just, just check it out there. One thing I do believe in is this concept of um, if someone really resonates with what it is that you currently offer or what you can offer, that they will go and seek you out. You know, gone. I think there's a massive transition happening in the world in digital space, especially which is pretty much every business, right? Whether you say you're offline, online, you're 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 all online, or you need to be online now. Yeah. Um, but you know, we have everything from teaching you how to build sales funnels to how to master Facebook. You know, to the Authority Academy, which is the collective, which we talk about the Authority Roadmap, which is a step by step process that helps you uncover what you really need to do and become to become an authority in your industry. Um, so we've got a number of different things there, but my first, um, first thing would be just to come and follow me on Facebook or, you know, friend me on Facebook and, and see whether or not, you know, I do have something that could help you out. Okay, great. So obviously your main thing is helping people turn their passion uh, and knowledge and skill into profits. How are you personally also um, keeping up with that? You know, um, you know, you know, uh, keeping up with, with the trends that are going on uh, on, on, on online in, in the digital space. Well, I guess two questions there. One is how do I keep up with the turning passions, prof, you know, to passion, profit, knowledge, right. et cetera, into, you know, skills into profit. I mean, yes. that's a bit of a tongue twister for me. Um, is you just need to number one, but remain congruent with what it is that you want to do. Now you can go make money selling t-shirts on Amazon, right? For me, I don't want to do that. Even if you showed me a secret where I could be making an extra million dollars a year selling t-shirts, I wouldn't just do that for the sake of it because whilst you're spending time, energy focus on that, you're moving it away from what you would really love to do. Um, so for me, 
you know, number one, yes, I am teaching people how to do this, but I'm also congruently doing it actively right now as well. So if you see behind me, there's this Unleash Your Greatness banner. That is my, that is a passion of mine. That's my purpose. That's that thing that I was put on this planet to do, you know? And so I'm building a business around that brand, which, you know, is all about helping people uncover their full potential. The Authority Academy is the, hey, if you've uncovered your full potential and you've found that you want to be an expert or you've got a message and you want to get it out there, I can show you how to do that as well. So the second part I think you were asking was how do I keep up with the trends? Yes. Is, is that what you're... Yes. I think it's, it's just remaining on the cutting edge of a couple of things and having go-to resources where you can figure out um, yeah, and find that information out. Um, for me, like I'm not up with what's happening on LinkedIn. I'm not up with what's happening on Twitter. I'm not up with really what's happening, you know, on Snapchat. Um, now I, I know enough to, to put yeah. me in the top, you know, top 5% <laughs> anyhow, but one thing that I'll say to everyone is, is just become a master at one of those things and you can find those resources from somewhere else. You know, like for me, I don't wait for someone to tell me about, Oh, you should try this on Facebook. Cause I'm the guy out there doing it. I'm the guy trialing and testing. And that's why people come to me. You know, that's why people buy our Facebook programs. Cause it's like, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to go out and be that person testing and trialing, you know? So I'm happy to be a Guinea pig in one of those areas. Um, and I think that's how you remain on the cutting edge and figure out trends. The rest comes down to actually intentionally researching and figuring out what's going on in the markets. Right. I cannot thank you enough, Brett. Uh, obviously, I know we're running a little off schedule with your time. Um, this has been fantastic. And sorry about the glitch earlier on, but I know we've covered quite a lot of things. Is there anything else that you might want to add that maybe you would want us to include just so that the, the viewer gets you know, a, a different perspective of who you are that we haven't covered? Probably instead of more about who am I, I think to try and give some value to, to your listeners um, so they can take something away and actually go and try it or test it or implement it themselves. Cause I think that's really where the true value comes from. You know, I understand if someone's new and they're watching me really, and let's be honest, they don't care about who I am. They're watching to see what they could receive from this. Right. right. So I'd rather, I'd rather twist it and go, what could I provide to your audience? So I'm going to come back to you and go, what do you think right now would be of most value to your audience? If they were to, to know people would want to know the mistakes they can avoid um mm -hmm. when starting off with a digital marketing agency or when okay. dealing with clients so something along those lines the, things that you overcame and how you sure came out well with that the biggest mistake is following too many people and listening to too many people's advice huge you know that was one of the biggest things i did you know i signed up to every single person's email list you know and even at my events and you would remember me saying this i said unfollow everyone what you need to do is unsubscribe you need yeah. to unsubscribe and unfollow and only choose one or two people in industry or that niche or in that learning environment that you're going to learn from. And I even say, I say, look, if you're not getting value from me, unsubscribe from me. I don't want to be someone stopping you from achieving what it is that you need to, you know, like when I started in the fitness space and I wanted to create products, I was signed up to dozens of email lists. I was getting emails and I'm like, Oh yeah, they're doing this. They're doing that. I should do this. I should do that. And it's just a whirlwind. So my, my ingredients there is, spend the time needed for you to make a decision that you can go, you know what? I do know, like, and trust this person enough to go, you know what? I'm going to take the next step. You know, you're not signing your life away. Just follow someone, follow a couple of people. You know, if you want to go all in, go and ask them to coach you and see what it looks like, you know, and see what you, the investments, be, right? Um, so that's the fastest, that's the fastest way. Um, and I would just say is, is make sure you do your due diligence. Don't just sign up with anyone who says that, yes, I can do this. You know, ask them. So what results have you personally got, first of all, and what are your clients doing? Um, that, that's the biggest mistake that too many people fall into is because everyone knows a friend who is an expert at X, right? Um, so that's a big hurdle that um, you want to make sure you jump over nice and clear. Um, the, the second thing is doing too much at the same time, like work on one thing at the same time. And when I say one thing at the same time, what I mean by that is mentally focus on one thing at the same time, right? Cause it's clear we're in business in a startup. You've got so many new things that you want to do. You know, we've got the authority roadmap where we have the foundation, the yeah. figuring out your customer and community, then the, your authority model, the products and deliverables you're going to have, you know, the different types of funnels you use, the social media you use, email marketing, all of those steps, right. Can become very overwhelming. Just 
concentrate on the most important thing right then and there. Don't try and jump straight to a sales funnel, put on Facebook ads and hopefully you're going to get a return on investment because you'll just waste money. You know, every audience I speak to, 99% of people's hand goes up when I ask who's used Facebook ads before. 99% of their hands go back down when I say who markets every single day. Right. right. The reason why people don't market every single day is because they don't have, um, they don't have a funnel or they don't have an offer or product that actually converts properly. So they stop and they're like, Oh, that's it. You know, we, we haven't missed a dollar on Facebook for the last four and a half years or something like that. You know, it's been crazy um, because we have figured out how to actually get product services and funnels converting. And that's another thing. Know your numbers, right? right. Know your numbers. So you, so you actually know what a conversion actually looks like and you know how much you can actually spend. And most entrepreneurs and people watching this probably will be like, if I asked you the question, how much would you spend? If I was to give you as many of your clients as you wanted right now, how much would you spend on getting a lead? People don't know. People don't know their numbers. Great stuff. Wow. No, I don't know. So there's a few, there's a few things to think about. Right. Great stuff. Well, thank you so much, Brett. I know um, there's quite a lot that we could have uh, talked about, but if you have been watching this episode and you found a nugget or two, which was a hundred when it comes to Brett, he over delivers, um, you can still go to um, brettcampbell.net. I'll put in all the links at the bottom. Okay. Um, Brett, I cannot thank you enough. And I also cannot thank you personally for having ushered me into this whole space by actually now becoming a highly respected person because I followed your roadmap. For that, I really, really thank you. No, I appreciate that and good on you. It's a, the, all the effort goes back to you. You know, you, you're the one who executed. And that's another thing that people need to look at is you can have all the information and resources in front of you, but you've got to execute it. Great stuff. Well, if this has resonated with you in any shape or form, just um, I will make sure that in the show notes, we've got everything that Brett has created uh, just so you can take home and uh, watch that. Thank you so much, Brett. My pleasure.